Hey everyone, Dr. Nicole here. There's something innately wired in all of us that tells us that there's just something wrong, especially when it comes to our kids. We get that gut feeling and we ask ourselves, is this right? Are they on track developmentally despite everything I'm being told? As a pediatric chiropractor, I see this all the time with children's case histories and the things that parents tell us. They say it's something just didn't feel right. Something about their developmental delays or autism or you know sensory processing later in life. The parents had a gut feeling that something wasn't right. Today, I want to address those gut feelings and tie them back to development because it's crucial to understand how we can help kids before they reach ages two, three, and four, when really those issues start to compound and make larger or bigger issues later on in life. Often, parents rely on growth charts, traditional articles, and even pediatricians that are saying they'll just grow out of it. So today, I wanna unpack that with you. Oftentimes, if you're a mom or dad whose child is struggling, you realize, hey, the pregnancy was really stressful. There was a lot of in utero stress or hey, the delivery was really hard on both mom and baby. And you know, hey, that C-section, that emergency C-section, that was really tough on baby. And they had to use forceps, they had to use vacuum extraction, they used manual assistance. And you know, if your baby has continued to struggle with feeding, latch, constipation, they continue to struggle with chronic cough, RSV, um, other immune struggles, you may be thinking to yourself, is there something more that's going on? Is there something that's causing all of these things that happened way earlier on than what I thought? And is it leading to everything we're seeing right now? Today, I wanna dive into this and really help you understand what's going on and also how there is something that can help address and support your child because we know that those earlier struggles are directly related to later on developmental delays, developmental challenges, immune challenges, gut challenges, sensory processing challenges, behavioral, social, and emotional challenges. All of that is tied to those earlier struggles. For so many kids in our practice, what we see time and time again is the children, the older children especially, who are struggling, we look back at their case history and we see the same themes, the same struggles over and over again. Difficulty latch, difficulty feeding, colicky, fussy, chronic constipation, immune struggles, RSV, croup, chronic cough, asthma, ear infections, and then on to sensory processing disorders or sensory integration problems. And most of the time, moms and dads, you say to yourself, in my gut, I knew something was going on. It's just, it wasn't until later on that we could officially clinically diagnose anything. And that's really what traditionally happens when we're looking at developmental delays, sensory processing, and autism. It's not until we focus on the eye contact, the communication, the repetitive movements, and those later on developing traits. If you're a parent whose child is struggling with delays, let me guide you through this because what I'm gonna talk about is the common thread that ties all of these softer signs together. Because as a parent, I know you've tried everything. You, you say, okay, I need to go to the digestive doctor. Next, I need to go to the OT. Next, I need to go to the physical therapist. Next, I need to go to the respiratory doctor. But really today, what I wanna talk about is that main processor, that main system, the brain, that really lumps everything together. Traditionally, autism and developmental delays have been blamed on genetics. But recently studies and research has really flipped that on its head and said, hey, you know what? Environment does play a bigger role than we thought. And as parents and clinicians, it's really the, the outside or external environment that's easy to focus on or the first thing that comes to mind. What environment is my child in? What can I do to my child's environment to create a better space or situation for them? But today I wanna flip that on its head and ask ourselves, what if it's not just the external environment, but what if it's also the internal environment, which includes the immune system, the digestive system, and all of those things inside, internally, that, that's fueling the brain and giving it information on how do we do something? What, what's going on inside, around us? Where should we go? How should we behave? What should we say? How should we act? When we combine all those symptoms that are happening internally, that's something called dysautonomia. And dysautonomia really means interference or dysregulation of the nervous system. And it's really happening at a subconscious level in our body. It's the breathing, it's the digestion, it's the emotional regulation, it's the 
um, immune function, all of those things that are supposed to be happening on autopilot, but they're not happening on autopilot and it's not easy and it's not doing it in a calm way. Now, why this is so important to us as pediatric chiropractors is because all of those autopilot, supposed to be automatic functions are all controlled by this area, the upper cervical or upper neck region. And if there was a tough birth, if there was an emergency C-section, if there was forceps or vacuum extraction or manual assistance during delivery, it really jams up this upper neck area. Now, I wanna switch screens right now and really show this visual because it shows the brain and the upper neck area right here is really a hub for processing all the information of the body. This controls the autonomic nervous system, ears, nose, and throat, vision, balance, coordination, um, speech, immune system, digestive system, um, speed, uh, motor and everything to do with feeding and latch. And all of this is controlled by one specific nerve called the vagus nerve. And now there are other nerves, but specifically the vagus nerve plays a huge role in all of these functions. Now, if you look up the vagus nerve, you're probably going to see it getting credit for breathing, social and emotional regulation. It's really a, a primary sensory nerve of the body. If we unpack the vagus nerve, it has a lot of stops, including it stops at the lungs, it stops at the digestive tract, and it really tells the brain everything that the body is doing. So if the autonomic nervous system and the vagus nerve are stressed out, it's gonna cause the brain to be completely overwhelmed and get stuck in development. And what that means is because the nervous system is working too hard on the motor system, the immune system, the sensory system, the behavioral system, all of those things, it can't get past that for speech and socialization and other higher cognitive functions. Now, let me be clear, as pediatric chiropractors, we don't treat autism. We don't say that we cure anything. We're saying that we really are just doctors of causes and we wanna go back and say, what are the key pieces that happened and that are showing us what's going on right now that happened earlier on in development in life? And using that information, how we can help your child, how we can support your child now. And the one thing that we look at earlier on is the early development and looking at those developmental milestones and seeing what really fuels the brain, which is all those earlier softer signs, those gut feelings and symptoms that you were noticing, but it was being brushed off or you were being told those are normal, they'll grow out of it. If we can help kiddos with those, then later down the road, we can help later on stages of development, including social cognition, um, emotional regulation that happens that build on top of those foundational softer signs. I know as a parent, if you got your kid eating right, if you're taking them to OT, PT, speech therapy, all of the different therapies, and you're really looking for that missing piece that's tying everything together, really look at the vagus nerve and the autonomic nervous system because it's really those two things or the nervous system just as a whole that is tying everything together. It's that big processor for everything else to be working correctly. It's like all of those things, the therapies and everything you're doing are pieces of, the, of a puzzle and the, the nervous system is that critical, crucial corner piece that you absolutely need to make that puzzle complete. And that's because the nervous system and the vagus nerve control everything. When we get those to work as they were designed to, when we get those up and running as they were designed to, you get better PTOT outcomes, you get better motor function, better motor systems, you get better integration and processing of the supplements that your child's taking because it literally controls everything. So when that helps or when we get that working right, it literally helps with everything working even better. So if you're kind of in those first phases, the 18 months, two years, and you're, you're seeing some of the struggles, some of the softer signs, and you're really worried about development later on in life, really dig into what's going on at the root of it. If you're a parent of a four or five year old or six year old who's already been diagnosed and who's already going through it, look to that missing piece of the puzzle of the vagus nerve to really help your child keep moving forward, get them unstuck from that plateau so all the therapies, all the support, all the care that you're giving them works better. Truth be told parents, it's hard to know where to start. As chiropractors, we start with the thing that controls everything, the nervous system.
That's because the brain and the body have to be able to talk to each other. And so often that internal environment is not getting the credit or the fame that it deserves. And so we wanna look at what's going on internally at a neurological level to help your child move forward. Now, if you have any questions or if you have any comments, leave them below or send us a DM because it's so key to really dive into the key or the root causes of all of your child's unique struggles in order to find a unique solution and unique support for your child. This is why in all of our consultations and all of our exams, you go into a, a in-depth health history, including birth, pregnancy, um, delivery, developmental milestones and delays and any other struggles and to really get a clear picture of what's going on, not only right now, but what was going on earlier in life to see how the foundation was set up for right now. Please share this video with anyone or a parent who you think could benefit from hearing this and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.